Yeah, 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 yeah. Big Rich here, Big Rich live on the mic radio show here on YouTube. Back to back again, back together again. The Hump Day Show. We got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover. Uh, we're gonna actually have um, a kind of condensed show. We're just gonna do one subject because this subject is really big. I was gonna do something else. Um, or uh, really not something else, but I was going to add to what we was discussing here and do a couple of, um, uh, more stories, current events and take some of your questions. But this particular subject has really touched me, you know what I'm saying? I mean, touched me in, in a negative way, if you will. And I really, really, really need to get, um, this off my chest and we'll start talking about it and chopping it up like we always do. So like I said, Big Rich here, Big Rich live on the mic radio show, the hump day show Wednesday. I hope everybody is safe. Everybody is happy. You're pursuing your goals. Your health is good. You're checking your numbers. You're doing everything that you need to do to make sure that you're here for a long time. Because let me tell you something, people, there's work to be done. Okay, there's work to be done. It, I can't remember in my brief lifestyle, my lifestyle, sorry, uh, lifetime, that we have had this type of chaos, turmoil, and just basic disruption to, you know, the way we do things and the progress that I feel that we have made as a country, as a people. So, you know, we need to stay woke, you know, stay woke. And um, we need to pull our proverbial sleeves up and we need to do something. We need to do something. We need to make sure that our voices are heard. We need to make sure that our votes are, are, are counted and cast. You need to get up off the, the couch, quit bullshitting. And do what you need to do. So today, subject is um, I titled it. You know, let's meet the uh, thirteen Democrats that oppose lowering the drug prices. And I had posted. Somebody has sent me. One of the viewers has sent me a um, a meme of Senator Cory Booker. Anybody that don't know him. He's one of two African-American senators in the Senate, in the upper chamber. And he's out of, uh, he is actually out of um, New Jersey, you know, and, um, you know, he's brilliant. You know, he's sharp. You know, they already touting him as a presidential candidate for the Democratic Party in 2020. So basically, I posted it on my Facebook page and um first couple of people were, you know, was in agreement and they put their two cents in and uh, I appreciate that. And then one of my best friends, if not my best friend in, in this world had, um, not took offense to it, but basically he was in disagreement with uh, me and the others and he had let it be known and, and he had some great points. He really did have some great points, but what I had implored him to do was read the entire bill uh, and see that a lot of this is being said, a lot that is being said in defense of these 13 traitors, I call them, um, is just lies. You know, look at the bill, read the bill and see that all of their points are just moot, you know. So first we're going to, I'm going to introduce you to the 13 Democratic senators who oppose this and we'll go down the line. So we start with Senator Cory Booker. He's a Democrat out of New Jersey. Like I said before, Senator Mark Warner, he's a Democrat out of Virginia. Senator uh, Marla Catwell, she's a Democrat out of uh, Washington state. Senator Bob Cassie, Democrat out of Pennsylvania. Senator John Tesser, Democrat out of uh, Massachusetts, Senator Chris Coons, Democrat out of uh, Delaware, Senator John Donnelly, Democrat out of Indiana, it looks like uh, Senator Martin um, Helmrich, Democrat out of New Mexico, 
Senator Patty Murray, Democrat out of Washington State. Senator Bob Menendez, Democrat out of New Jersey. Senator Heidi Hellskamp out of North Dakota. Senator Michael Bennett out of, looks like Colorado, Democrat out of Colorado. And Senator Tim Carper is out of, uh, is a Democratic Senator out of Delaware. Now, for those who don't know, about a week ago, last Wednesday, um, Senator Amy um, Kobaker, a uh, Democrat out of um, Minnesota, and Senator Bernie Sanders, independent out of Vermont, had submitted an amendment to tackle the ep ep epidemic of high drug prices in the United States. The amendment would have established a deficit neutral reserve fund relating to lowering prescription drugs for Americans by importing drugs from Canada, right? You had, believe it or not, you had 12 Republican senators. Now, you, now anybody who knows anything about current po politics, the Republicans run both chambers of, of Congress and the presidency. OK, so it is the majority It's not a super majority, but it is the majority on both houses and the presidency. You feel me? So to have 12 Republicans, 12 Republican senators to vote with the Democrats and this independent and Bernie Sanders is what amounts to history, especially in this no good, no working, just crazed uh, Congress that we've had the last eight, nine years, including two senators that I never thought that I would see. Well, actually one that I never thought that I would agree with at all. It's uh uh, the junior senator out of Texas, Ted Cruz. I mean, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would ever agree with anything or be on the same side of anything um, that he, you know, agreed with. Then you had Rand Paul, um, junior senator out of Kentucky, and John McCain, obviously senior um, senator out of uh, Arizona. And the bill... Or the amendment got squashed and it got defeated 52 to 46. So basically, if thir of the 13 Democrats, Democratic senators had voted for this amendment, it would have passed in the upper chamber. Now, can I say with 100% certainty that in the lower chamber, Congress, where you have the more rabid conservatives um, and the Tea Party Republicans, would have it would have passed in the lower chamber i can't say that but we would have crossed that bridge when we got to it the fact of the matter is democrats these 13 democrats helped the republican-led senate defeat this bill and what it did was it, it hurts all of us and i'm going to put up a, um, a a graph later on in the show where we're going to compare the um the prices OK, because a lot of people are misinformed about, you know, regulatory and, and oh, you know, Cory Booker and them was just worried about, you know, illegal or unprocessed drugs coming from. We're going to break all that down because that's that's just myths. Excuse me. That's just myths. So. These people here. Like I said, these senators, they have sold out, sold out to the pharmaceutical companies, right? And uh, the first graph I'm going to put up is, remember I said I introduced you to 13 senators. 13 senators, half of them, more than half, seven of them are made, have major contributors that make up the pharmaceutical company. So as you look now, of the graph that's going to cover my face so you can actually see it. The number one getting, and, and when I'm looking over here, I'm looking at my notes. The number one senator that is uh, getting these contributions is uh, Patty Murray out of uh, Washington State. She's getting almost $300,000. She's getting exactly $265,406, and she's the number one Democrat as far as getting contributions from the pharmaceutical company. Next one is Cory Booker. 
he gets 233,750. He's number two. Third is Bob Casey. He gets 200 231,380. Then Tom Caper. Then Robert Menendez. Then Chris Coombs. Then, then Michael Bennett. All of these sources is from uh, um, opensecrets.org. This is all public record. Okay, so if you don't believe me, remember I've always said, don't believe me just because I say say so. Do your own research. If you go in the public records, you can actually see that these numbers are true. So are you trying to tell me that 13 Democrats vote against the lowering of these prices, right? And seven of them get major contributions to their campaigns and this is like yearly this is not like a one-time thing this is what they get on a regular basis i'm not saying that like cory booker gets two hundred and thirty three thousand dollars every year i don't know i can't substantiate that but this is what he's gotten to this date you follow what i'm saying so my thing is we have to look at it with the stink eye we actually do there is a issue there is a problem with corporate money in politics because it goes against the foundation of the constitution one man one vote it should be changed one person one vote but that's what it says one man one vote but what we are learning now as we all have our this awakening is that it's not one man one vote or one woman one vote it's who has the big money? It's big, it's big business. What they do is they just buy and pay these people. These people are bought and paid for. And that is a problem. That is a problem that we need to address and we need to attack. Because 72% of the United States, 72% when they do these various pat polls, uh, um, CNN poll, Quinny, Quinniac polls, et cetera, et cetera. 72% of the country wants lower drug prices. And you might say, well, okay, 72%, but that means 28%. Well, I would even, you, okay, that means 28% don't mind. Well, I would even lower that even more. I would say half of that 28% probably don't know. They probably don't use drugs. You know, don't, you know, they, they, they're not, uh, sick or, or or anything like that where they don't need to use any drugs or they work for the pharmaceutical companies or own the pharmaceutical companies. But even if it was, let's just say that 28% was the status quo, 72, the overwhelming majority of the country wants to lower drug prices. And now we're going to put up the graph that I got. And the graph is courtesy of sec Secular Talk, and Kyle, I appreciate um, he did he did his own show and broke it down. So um, I used his graph that he put together. Well, actually, Senator Sand Sanders put it together, but Kyle had broadcast it on his channel. So just look look at look look at the prices. Look at the prices now. What I need to let everybody know, and what I was trying to explain on Facebook last night, is these are not different drugs. You know what I'm saying? These are not, if you look at the at the Canada, Canada drugs, right, on the left side, those are the same exact drugs as the ones on the right side that are under the United States flag. Same drugs. It's not, okay, let's just say um, Bayer makes this aspirin, and then you have another a generic company make another aspirin, and they're saying the same. It's just like basically if you go in and you buy... Tylenol, right? And then right next to the Tylenol, if you go into a CVS, you buy Tylenol or you can buy the derivative of or the generic brand of Tylenol, which is the CVS brand. You find no, it's not like that. It's the same exact drugs. What happens is Canada, their government has made sure, first of all, everybody in Canada gets free, free health care. Okay. So we all know that. Canada is leaps and bounds in front of us as far as taking care of their citizens, as far as making sure that they have the adequate care. I doubt, am I saying that 
their system is 100% and is the be all end all? No, I can't say that because nothing is 100%, nothing. So you really can't say that. But we're just basically going with what we look on here. And I'm not going to pronounce them because I'm going to butcher them, but I want you to look at them. Look at the first one here for um, uh, anaphylactia, anaphylaxis. 290 bucks, Canada. The same drugs are being sold here for 620. The next one for high cholesterol, $160 in Canada, $720 here. For um, estrogen therapy, $84 in Canada, $421 here. Look at this for depression. Imagine how many people are dealing with depression now. We basically are always being told that these people, these lone wolf shooters and all of this type of stuff are dealing with, with depression. $84 in Canada. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. $436 in Canada. $2,626 here. That is one of the reasons why we have people running around here dealing with depression without medication. Look at that's like a what? That's like a 400% rise. Look at the next one for another one for high cholesterol. $183 there, $840 here. Heartburn, $214 there, $736 here. Look at that. I don't even know what the heck that is for, but it's $50 there, $101 here. For diabetes, how many people do we know to have diabetes in your family? You might have diabetes. Do you understand that you are paying 11, excuse me, you're paying $1,064 for the same stuff that people in Canada are paying $255? Look at this for arthritis. Thank God I ain't got arthritis, but I might. I might have it. $895 here, $212 there. And then for asthma, how many asthmatics? Are in are, are are in the viewership. How many ad, how many people do you know? Excuse me, that are asthmatic. Nine hundred and eighty dollars here, two hundred and twelve dollars in Canada. This is ridiculous. This is borderline criminal. And for these thirteen senators, seven of which get substantial donations from the pharmaceutical company should be called to task. They should be called to task and they should have to fight for their jobs come November, you know, cause remember we, some of them, I, 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 don't, I don't know how it runs, but in two years we're going to have another election. That's the midterm elections. I feel that if, if stuff continues to go the way it is now, the midterm swing, the midterm swing, unless they put some right wing nut, some wing nut in the Supreme Court, which slants it even more. And um, they are they enact laws that will basically suppress the vote even further. If things keep going the way they are and, and, and exit circumstances like that don't happen, this midterm election, I feel, is going to be similar to the Tea Party midterm elections in President Obama's third year. Because he came, remember I, I said it in, in a couple of shows ago, when he rose to power, the Democrats had super majority in both chambers. The, midtown, the midterm elections, they lost the House. OK, they lost the House significantly. And then every election after that, you know, they lost a little bit more, lost a little bit more then they lost the, the Senate. Um, and I just feel that they're going to not only are some Democrats who the progressive wing feel are, you know, not left enough, you know, left of center. They are not progressive enough. They're going to to get uh, primaried on their left. If you think about it, this last um, election, Debbie Washington Schultz just barely squeaked through when she was 
primary to her left. I had wished that she had uh, lost. I voted against her, but she won, you know, and I think that was more so, you know, you have a lot of people alike that are sheep. I've said it before, you know, the 1%, the status quo, the rich and powerful, they count on us being sheep. So it's like, oh, well, well who do we, uh, babe, well, um, who do we vote for? Uh, for Oh, yeah, 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 we always vote for such and such. We always vote for such and such. They don't know nothing that goes on and don't really give a damn. You follow what I'm saying? You feel me? So I just feel that that's going to happen. But these 13 need to be held, brought to bear. They need to be held accountable for what they did. And I have brought out Cory Booker for a couple of reasons. One, I was a Cory Booker fan. Just like I was a President Obama fan. You know what I'm saying? Both disappointed me tremendously. So I feel that if I invest my time and effort and motivate others, I feel, because I'm being told to do the same, and you are a disappointing person. Now, everybody can make a mistake. Everybody can make a mistake. We're all human. But I'm talking about when you deliberately go to do things and say things that are detrimental to the whole. And then instead of saying, Hey, look, you know, I screwed up this, that, and the other, woo, woo, woo. Now you're going to lay this some more bullshit, you know what I mean? To try to, to, um, cover up this, I have a problem. So that's why I took offense, uh, to Cory Booker and I, and I brought it to him. And then I, then I did my research because again, I like to read. I really do. I like to read. And um, what I like to do, when you have a situation where you are disappointed or when you feel that you're lied to, then you definitely need to bring that person to bear. And I'm going to start doing and continue, not start, continue to do that. I'm going to make sure that I read and I make sure that I know what's going on. I saw the bill, saw the uh, the news reels, I read the articles, I saw the count, I saw the 13 um, Democrats, and then I saw Cory Booker's name, and then I saw his response um, via a tweet. And actually, I'm going to read uh, the tweet that he said. He said this was like the next day after he was getting hailed. This was a January 12th. Uh, and remember, the, 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 the bill was defeated January 11th on my birthday last Wednesday. And it says, grateful to you. Please know a number of Dems who voted no last night and, and now is in capital says, agree, we must import. But we believe basic FDA standards must be met. That's bullshit. Because again, like I said, these are the same drugs that are... So here, the same pharmaceutical companies who sell us the drugs, sell them to Canada. Now, you might say, well, why the heck is Canada's drugs? How do they sell Canada's drugs so much? And they sell them, excuse me, they sell Canada's drugs so little and they sell drugs here for less. I mean, for, for, for more. I'm screwing that all up. It's uh, simple. Simple. One, because Canada has free health care for its citizens, they have a commission who regulates and negotiates lower prices or the lowest price for drugs from the United States and all over the country. We don't have that. This is a, a full capitalist system. So we don't have that anytime anybody tries right, tries to regulate and lower lower drug prices and stuff like that, then you have lobbyists that comes in there, buy and pay a bunch of Republican and Democratic senators and Congress people, and it gets shot down. You follow what I'm saying? So it's like the pharmaceutical company is not going to sell to Canada because they have to sell it to them lower. They looking at the bottom line. It was like, okay, well, we're gouging them in the United States. Okay, yeah. 
we're not getting as much profit as when we send it to Canada, but I'd rather have some profit than to be like, well, no, we're not going to deal with Canada because regardless, whatever the deal is, these pharmaceutical companies is not stupid. If Canada and other regions don't get the drugs from here, they're going to get them from somewhere else, or they're just going to develop their own pharmaceutical companies and then cut you totally out. And Cory Booker, like I said before, is brought to bear, is brought out front, is because, like I said, A, of the disappointment. But then, if anybody realizes it, the day, a couple of days before, I think it might have been that Monday, he went in front of Congress, not in front of the entire Congress, but he went in front of the selection committee against uh, Jeff Sessions, um, a Republican senator from Alabama, um, reference his um, reference his bigoted and racist past and his present views, and he was trying to be confirmed uh, to be the new attorney general, which is the highest law enforcement a uh, law law enforcement officer in in the land. So everybody was touting him, and everybody was you know pumping him up and like, okay, cool, thank you, Corey. This is what the deal is. This is what we need. You know, the progressive wing is now taking over. This, that, and the third. Then the next day or two days after that, he votes against this. You know, he vote he votes for his best interest and against our best interest. So I got a problem with that. I really do. So what we're doing here and in other radio channels and, and shows is that we are all drafting letters uh, to all 13 senators and letting them know that we are disappointed and we're getting all our readers and subscribers to do the same thing. Now, a lot of people might say, you know, that's just a waste of time. Okay, well, I tell you what, really a waste of time if you sit back, close your eyes or hide your head under a pillow and think that it's going to go away because if you don't say anything, you have nothing to say. And what that means is if you don't say anything or bring something up when it's wrong, then when it continues to go wrong or other things continue to go wrong, then you have nothing to say. Then that's just like people where I tell people it's like, Hey, I understand where a lot of people did not want to vote, you know, I already explained what I did. There were just certain people or certain um, positions within the vote on the, on the ballot that I did not, I refrained from because I just refused to just throw away my vote. But I did vote, you know, overwhelmingly, overwhelming majority of the ballot I did vote on. And I understand when people say, look, I'm just not going to be, sucked in to the nonsense i'm just not going to waste my time i understand that i mean i i have to respect you, your opinion everybody has an opinion and everybody has a right to vote or not but what i say is the only thing i will say to that is i think that you forfeit your right to voice your opinion uh to complain not voice your complaint your voice your opinion but to complain about what's going on because you didn't vote, you know? So, I mean, you know, that's seeing that day. I know I'm going to get some, some thumbs down and, and, and some DMS and stuff to basically, you know, saying that I, that was just stupid for me to say, but I mean, you know, hey, everybody has an opinion. You know, I'm, I'm always down to, to chop it up back and forth. So that's going to be the end of our show. Uh, if you like it, thumbs up. If you didn't thumbs down, put a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you don't want to put it down below and you want to DM me, you can um, join us over at Instagram at uh, Big Rich Live on the mic underscore between each word. If you want to go back and forth with Twitter, which I'm pretty much on Twitter all the time, it's capital B, capital R, live on the mic. Our email address is Big Rich Live on the mic at gmail.com. The website is www.bigrichliveonthemic.com. Facebook page is Facebook dot com backslash big rich live on the mic share like and subscribe i appreciate it i will see you saturday for the saturday show i don't know what the subject is i'll look in the um e either in the comment section or i'll grab something out of the emails because we get emails all the time 
I appreciate you giving me your undivided attention for this last 30 minutes. We'll see you Saturday. Stay blessed. Stay woke. Do what you got to do to get the best outlook you possibly can. On that note, we out. Peace.